What's going on everyone? Ulita back here with a brand new tutorial on the channel. I know you guys love these kind of tutorials. I mean, I can see it on the views, I can see it on the comments, I can see it in the stream, I can see it anywhere. And today, I will be showing you guys part one of how to defend an EF24, but there will be separate kind of stuff and things that I want to highlight. So in this video, I will be highlighting how you play a switch in the best possible way, basically, and how you want to put your players on the pitch. So I need to put this up into different kind of sections because, I mean, defending in this game is obviously really hard and there's a lot of stuff you need to be thinking about. So part one we will be doing today will be, like I said, the player switching in defense. So let's just jump into today's video and don't forget to smash a like and subscribe down below and also comment something nice. I mean, now let's just jump into today's video. So if we start to talk about the play switching in terms of being on your opposition's half. I mean, trying to put a bit of pressure, trying to cause an error early up to get like a very good opportunity out of it. This is the thing I do. So for example, here I have the ball and I'm trying to uh, get a proper attack going. So the thing I'm trying to do here is, as you see, I'm doing the second man press, which you, you do by pressing R1 on your controller. And at the same time, I do second man press with Tio Hernandez onto his Tio Hernandez P. I I see that he's doing a play lock and I want to prevent that pass from reaching R9. So the thing I do, I use the R1 to my advantage, but at the same time, I'm using the, the play switching to get to uh, Bellingham and cover the pass to R9. And here we start off how we use the player switching with on our opponent's half base. So you see me, I'm trying to put some pressure onto his Cafu. And I know obviously when you play a lot of pro players, they like to switch the ball from like fullback to fullback because there's like almost no way to stop it really. So you see, even before he's basically powered up and trying to switch it, you see that I already switched to Kylian Mbappé. And I do this by switching with the right stick. And the right stick switching is one of the most important things on this game to learn. And why? Mainly because you need to be very accurate with it. It's quite hard at the beginning to get used to right stick switching because you can obviously also switch with L1, which basically gets the closest player. But if you switch it with the right stick, you get more accurate, but it can also get you the wrong player and make you do weird stuff with the player that you didn't really want to switch to. So you see here, I'm trying to get over to Theo Hernandez. If we play it here, trying to both cover Messi and then at the same time, there's like no real danger because he's play locking to Haaland here. This is totally fine. And then here, I'm trying to go on to Haaland basically because I want to pressure him and trying to get close to him. This is fine. And here again, when he switches it to his center back, I'm ready on the switch. Here, I was a bit too slow. Here, I need to be able to switch to Messi to prevent this pass from happening, but this is fine. As you see, I'm trying to get Messi over onto the other side of the pitch. And here again, if I feel like he's about to switch it, I do right stick, right stick switch already. And if we look at this play here, you see that I already switched to Kylian Mbappé. And as I said, I basically do this by right stick switching with my controller. And from here, if we go 10 seconds back, you will see if we go back to this kind of section, that is almost impossible for me to directly switch from Lionel Messi at this point to Kylian Mbappé, because there are so many players closer than Kylian Mbappé, basically. So the thing you need to do is you see I switch to Bellingham, I switch to uh, Potea super quick there if you notice then I get Kylian Mbappé and here again obviously very very hard to switch but it's fine trying to track back with Kylian Mbappé here and as you see here I do basically trying to cover the runs of Haaland and R9 at the same time and then doing a bit of second man press with my Rio Ferdinand which I shouldn't do here because Kylian Mbappé has a great run here but here again no worries just trying to keep it compact once again using the second man press to my advantage and then switching to a Rio Ferdinand with the right stick switching and you will see how active I am with the, with the right stick switching when I feel like I'm close enough to the, the, the defender that's when I go in for the tackle and um, basically getting the ball. So if we play this back one more time, just let it play. You see, right stick switch, right stick switch, and then when it gets in the, uh, into this opportunity, I do right stick switching once again, and Maldini gets the ball. So we talked about the switching basically, and I don't want you guys to overanalyze and think, oh, I need to switch 10 times in every attack where my opponent is, uh, you know, going forward. It's not like that, because if you over switch, you will be super, super open in defense. So it's find the balance between actually tracking back with your players and putting your players into the right positions of the pitch, but also trying to use the right stick switch and trying to cause some pressure. If we play this, for example, you will see that this guy is going to switch it, but I'm not really bothering to switch to Messi here to cover the wing because I know for a fact that his fullback will not be pushed up as high so I can switch to Messi a bit later so it's also understanding how the game works so in this case for example you see here 
Tio will probably switch it in or replace it back to Ferdinand and then switch it. But you see, I'm here with Cristiano Ronaldo, who I just substituted in into the second half. And here again, if I'm getting a bit lucky when he's switching it, you could reckon that I maybe should be blocking this kind of switch, even though we know that the switching is super, super good on this game. So here he switches. I could have taken the ball, but I don't bother doing anything here. But as soon as the switch comes, I'm trying to go a bit further up with Messi, trying to bring Haaland down to cover Bellingham, for example, with the right six switch, and basically trying to position my players into the right position of the pitch. So as you see here, he doesn't really have anyone to pass to, except he's doing a very, very good play lock on the wing. So he's doing a play lock on the wing. Here again, he doesn't really have anyone to pass to. The only option he has really is to pass it back or to go with a step over straight forward and hopefully he can try to reach the corner flag and try to attack from there. But then again, I have Tio and Anderson with the ear, so it's going to be really hard for him. So once again here, you see he's just doing the straight play locks, running the ball out of play. And that's some good pressure. And I also want to highlight this because this is something that I don't think a lot of people understand, if that makes sense. And looking from a pro's perspective. So when he gets into this opportunity or into this space with Kylian Mbappé, I'm putting down a trap. And why? You need to think about this game. You need to use this kind of little thing in here. My brain is not the biggest, but I know for a fact if I put Kylian Mbappé into this position, where, as I said, he doesn't really have a lot of options. I'm putting him into a trap. So the thing I do is I do right stick switch to Nilian Messiel, trying to be close to Kylian Mbappé. And at the same time, I'm doing the second man press using R1. So it basically means that I'm trying to sandwich him. I'm trying to get Messi coming uh, from the back and then Tio from the front to do a sandwich in, uh, on Kylian Mbappé. And the thing is here, he doesn't really have a lot of space. He runs the ball out of play and I'm automatically getting the ball. So that's some great, great pressure and some good right stick switching. So this is another situation where you've seen that I already selected Mbappé and I know for a fact that this guy you know liked to switch a lot of times through his center backs and that's something that you need to figure out whoever you're playing if your opponent likes to switch from fullback to fullback that is obviously very 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 hard to read it but if he needs to switch to the center back and then switch it you will have a bit of time to be able to use the right stick switch to your advantage and then trying to you know get closer to the player because this switch will almost be impossible to cover anyway you won't be able to get the ball directly from the switch but you will be able to put your opponent into a tight either space basically because you're getting closer to him than if you were just selecting or using the L1 button to get the closest player. So we're here with Kylian Mbappé basically and he gets into a bit of a tough position and the thing I do here is I do the second man press as we talked about with the R1 but at the same time I'm trying to close down the space into Messi. The thing he does really well here though is that he sees Haaland and he needs or he needs he can play in between my Mbappé and, and Bellingham which he uses here very well. If you see the play switching here, I accidentally, because the right stick switch is really, really hard to master, as I said, I'm not mastered it yet. I don't think there's any player that's doing, you know, the right type of right stick switching every game because it's really, really hard. But it's more about how you anticipate after the situation. And the thing that's happening here then is that it gets onto my half of the pitch with Messi facing my goal. And this is, you know, a bit of a nightmare. I mean, it doesn't really matter too much here because I still have my whole defense in position and I still have Puteas and Bellingham defending it pretty well, as you see here. But the thing I do is that I selected Jude Bellingham and I'm trying to get close to Lionel Messi. So the thing I do is I try to chase him from behind just to get ba uh, Bellingham back into position but at the same time if he's a bit lazy and not really passing the ball away with Messi there I can intercept it from behind with Bellingham. So the thing here Arnon is a very tight sequence of space and I think if he keeps on running here he uh, will lose the ball eventually to uh, Bellingham who I tracked back with. But at the same time I play switch very very quickly there to Cafu and if we play this sequence back once more you will see that I switch to Cafu and R9 doesn't have a lot of space. So as I said, Bellingham will either take the ball from R9 or he needs to pass it away. I see that very, very quickly in this kind of sequence. I see that he sent Haaland on a run with the L1 mechanic or the L1 button. And I switch very, very quickly to Cafu, reading that Haaland is about to run into space. You could argue that Bellingham should be intercepting this pass. Doesn't matter. We switch very, very early to Cafu and we get the ball and can start our attack from there. This is going to be another sequence where I show you guys how to defend the middle pretty well with using the right stick switch and also combining it with the second man press. And I think the second man press should be in a different video because as I said, you need to combine all these things to be a really, really good defender in this year's game. But as you see here on the wing, I try to, first of all, put some pressure with Mbappé onto his Havertz. But when I see that Mbappé is a bit far off from Havertz and I can't really intercept the ball, I'm trying to track back with Haaland here to cover the, the pass to Messi. The thing that he does here, this is a very, very, I would say, uh, AI pass finding Haaland that I didn't think he meant that even though he did well and uh, if you see here I'm trying to basically cover the middle very well with both my Bellingham and Poteas as you see here because I don't want my opponent to be able to reach my uh, his Kylian Mbappé or his R9 as you see in this sequence so 
The thing I'm doing here is I'm doing second man press with Haaland and at the same time trying to close the gap in between Poteas and Bellingham so he can't play through me. The thing he could have done here maybe is to find a number four in the yellow shirt here, which I think is Graham Hansen, but I'm not sure. But the thing he's doing is he's doing a ball roll and I'm putting Bellingham into a very, very good position and the AIO Poteas is putting her into a very good position as well. He, he's trying to find a pass into his striker. He's a bit eager, losing 2-0 as well, obviously. But then good interception from my Poteas and then we can start our our counter attack from there basically and uh, that's mainly because I used the player switch and the rising switching to my advantage so the last part about the right stage switching for this video will be how you defend outside of your box with the right stage switching. And in my opinion, I don't really use the right stage switching a lot when I defend outside of my box, basically because I don't want my opponent to be outside of my box. I'm trying to use a bit of more high press so my opponent doesn't really get into this kind of situation. But if he's really good and gets into this situation, this is how you should defend it. If we look here, he obviously, if you judge by this situation, he's been getting very, very deep and getting my defense very, very deep. So first of all, my Proteas is a bit out of position and I take that into consideration. I see that my Haaland is quite deep down so the thing I want to do is to try to get back with Haaland and try to block the pass from going to De Bruyne into his Bellingham as you see at the top right of your screen. So the thing I'm try trying to do here is first of all I'm getting Haaland. I realized quickly that I've been unfortunately trying to get to him instead of actually closing down the pass from his De Bruyne into Bellingham. So the thing I do here pretty quickly is I switch to Bellingham but at the same time do the second man press with Haaland. So if I'm getting a bit lucky the second man press will do very well on towards my opponent's De Bruyne and trying to get the ball but if he manages to get the ball into Bellingham here I still have my Bellingham who can defend him really well so the thing he's doing is somehow finding this pass between Haaland's legs I think this is really really good defending but obviously obviously we know how ESC24 is you can get very very unlucky in these kind of situations so the thing I do here is his Bellingham has a bit of space here, I mean, in between Mario Ferdinand and Theo Hernandez, and I think about what I should do. The thing I should do here, and I think everyone agrees that watching this video, is try to get Bellingham into closing down the space in between Theo and Theo Ferdinand. So, you, I see, my opponent is trying to take that space, as I've told you guys about, and I'm getting closer with Bellingham, and when I'm close enough, you see by my controller at the top right, I'm holding L2 to get more control of my, my player, which is called Joking, which we will uh, showcase in another episode of how you defend, basically. And I'm trying to get close to him, I don't press anything, and my Bellingham is, is as close as he possibly can be, gets the ball, perfect defending, and here I can start my attack, hopefully scoring the third one in this game. For the last one, I think this is so funny to explain because this does actually make a lot of sense and I hope you guys will learn from this. But this is going to be the last sequence and it's going to be a very common sequence, I think, for a lot of you guys playing Weekend League, playing Division Rivals, playing versus friends, whatever it is. And it's basically coming from the wing. And I mean, I we know how good the wing play in this game is and a lot of players want to find this penetrating pass between the fullback here and basically Poteas, who I brought down very, very good in this kind of sequence. So we see here, I brought Poteas into a very, very good position. In case of this one, I think I'm defending this really, really good. The thing I could have done is to basically try to get a striker down uh, with the switching with the right six switch to a striker and then trying to get him deeper down to defend maybe the pass up to De Bruyne and then up to Bellingham, whatever. But I still think I defend this pretty well because, I mean, this is a good pass, but I think it's a very, very automated pass by the AI. So, I mean, he gets into this kind of situation. And when he gets into this kind of situation, he's basically beating my line of the defensive midfielders, which is, in my opinion, the most important line when you want to defend, especially at a higher level as well. Because when your opponent is getting into this kind of uh, parts of the pitch, I mean, he has a great chance of scoring. We gotta be honest, because the 1v1 defending in this game is really hard. Obviously, the extra passes are not that great in this year's game, but it's still very, very hard to defend. So the thing you see me do here is if we play it back once more and we just let it play on, until I stop it, I do this very well. I just track back with, with, with Poteas, then I switch to Cafu, then I switch to Poteas once again with the right stick switch and here again, I switch very, very quickly from Maldini to Ferdinand. I know why you may ask. Because I'm doing the second man press with Maldini, but at the same time, I need to cover the pass basically from Haaland here. So I'm trying to get closer to him, so she can't really do any skill moves or trying to beat me. And at the same time, I do that. I try to get closer to Haaland, closing down that space. So if Ham gets the pass off to Haaland, I'm closer with Rio Ferdinand, and hopefully I can intercept either one more pass to R9 or a shot from Haaland going at the far post. And this is how it plays out. Maldini is put in a very good position. 
You see, if he finds Haaland here, I think he has a very, very hard chance of actually finding his R9 or even taking the ball forward and shooting. So I do this perfectly. The second man press is perfect just um, retrieving the ball back and just a small tip when you get the ball in these kind of situations just be calm you can play back to the keeper and make your team get into position again because as i said mbappe is down now playing as a right wing back almost in a five back right so you also want to have a bit of patience when you're trying to build up especially when you get the ball from your opponent in this kind of situations so basically that's been everything for how you right stick switch thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to leave a like and comment something nice down below i know you guys love these kind of videos and it would be really really nice seeing other the kind of tutorials that you guys want uh, me to do because i have a few ones left with especially defending that we have attacking building up whatever you guys want to see and uh, yeah don't forget to subscribe as well and i'll see you guys in the next video take care everyone stay safe and as always peace